welcome to SantaCon! Woo! You guys want to hear something amazing? I got all the way to where Santa Con is and I found out that I left my ID. So now we're going back home to get my ID and then we can come back and join Santa Con. Don't be like me. Okay, let's try this again. Oof. Let's try this again. I could say I told you so. You made it up in your head. And when you tell me that it's not enough, let me slip you my address. You know I think you're cute. Baby, don't stop, just set a new course. All right, so we're here. We got to go. I want to talk. Not going to be fun. Look at this. Oh, there you go. There's one more. 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 Hey guys, so it's like 8 o'clock in the morning and I am about to go see a patient who interestingly seems like he has pericarditis. Super cool in my opinion, but not cool for the patient obviously. It turned out that the person has the flu, influenza, and because of that with any viral illness you can get pericarditis. They were at a different hospital and then left and now they're back at our hospital because of still feeling sick, still having a fever. So yeah, I'm gonna go check on that patient now. So it's a little after lunch time and I'm waiting to round with the attending. Today I'm on the interventional service. So the attending is interventional cardiologist and they've been in the cath lab all day doing, you know, procedures on people and caths and stuff. Super cool. But now it's like a little after one o'clock and we're going to start rounding soon. So now it's like almost three and I'm about to go see another consult. Um, we just got called to see this patient who has a history of heart failure and who has a new diagnosis of amyloidosis. And amyloidosis can be hereditary or it can be acquired. And there's different types. This patient has hereditary amyloidosis. So they have like 
the genetic component, and it's basically like misfolding of proteins in the body that can deposit in different organs. So we were consulted because the patient has heart failure from a while ago, but also just recently got diagnosed with amyloidosis. So the question is, can we continue to treat them in the normal way that you would treat heart failure, or do you treat them differently because of the amyloidosis? This patient's already on a whole regimen of heart failure medications, which are called GDMT. And it includes like a beta blocker, an ACE inhibitor, like Entresto, diuretic, of course, uh, spironolactone, and Jardians. Different cases call for different things, of course. So this patient's already on those meds. And then for amyloidosis itself, there is another medicine that is specific for amyloidosis that's supposed to kind of help stop the progression of amyloidosis. And this patient's already taking that outpatient. All in all, doesn't look like there's much change to be made to this patient's medication regimen while they're here in the hospital. But I'm gonna go see the patient and see how they're doing, and then we're gonna decide from there. Now I'm on my way to the CCU to discuss a case with the cardiology fellow. <laughs> Um, he's here after three weeks of shortness of breath, which got acutely worse over the last two days. He was told prior to his carpal tunnel surgery to stop his Jardians two days before. The surgery was on the 14th, so the 16th. And um, he instead held Forsamite. So it does like he had a trope. It was like 64, but down tended to 57. Yeah. So not really anything. <laughs> And now I'm officially out of the hospital and I am gonna head to meet up with John. It's raining <laughs> and my umbrella broke, but that's okay. Anyways, I'm gonna go enjoy getting out early from work because it's four o'clock. Whoa! Being on consults rocks and you get to get out early. And I'm gonna close out the vlog here. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.